We have just concluded a joint statement between the ETUC, representing 45 million workers and their trade unions, and his organisation, representing 55 million workers and their trade unions. So 100 million workers coming together. One major message, we say no to divide and conquer because it's the oldest trick in the book, but it's back, it's back in fashion everywhere. Whether it's putting men against women, uh, whether it's putting the North against the South, the South against the North, migrants, whatever it is, it's, it's back very much in fashion with those in power. So we say no to that. We then also had a number of recommendations, which I brought forward this morning in the Burley Month, so I'm very happy being here this afternoon. So uh, the, one, the, the first thing we said is that yes to investment, but there can be no blank checks. Investment has to form with social conditionalities. And among those social conditionalities has to be the obligation to respect the workers' rights to join a trade union and to collectively bargain for their fair wage. And that's an important part of the conversation because it's too late after the money has been given out to say well we hope and pray that, they, that every, every employer lives up to their responsibilities or every government lives up to theirs. It's too late then. We need to make sure that there's a commitment, a monitoring procedure and a way to hold to account for those social standards. The second point we made was we can do that strongly from the EU end by making sure that we have a due diligence law, and I see you have members of the European Parliament here, who I know strongly backing that law. So to make sure that in companies throughout their supply chains, they are uh, securing rights. We also asked for there to be quality jobs, that whatever the discussion is, it can't just be about the extraction of raw materials, that there needs to be a, a value chain Everybody needs to have the opportunity to have a quality job covered by a collective agreement, secure terms and conditions exactly um, as have been talked to him. But we also asked for democracy within all of this. And democracy isn't just going and voting for politicians. That's not part of the democracy. It's not the only part of it. That's why we asked for the inclusion of a labour forum, a South, North, North, South labour forum. Uh, and we have ideas about the role for that and, and about its tasks. And um, that was what I was, I was very strongly putting in the case for this morning. We also asked for a just transition to look at not only the jobs, because that's an important part of it, how workers make that just transition, but also the communities, because the communities in which those industries are based, uh, the whole community is affected. And um, so there needs to be, it's, no worker left behind sounds great, but the reality of it on the ground is that workers and the communities have very much been left behind. So we need to find a way to make those principles into real practices, a way um, that, 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 that everybody lives up to that. Then finally, I wanted to say something about the deal that was done at the weekend with Tunisia. And I think that deal has, is, a, is a, an alarming deal because the EU is looking entirely the other way in relation to the human rights situation there, in relation to the treatment of a lot of people, but including the people that I represent, trade unionists. And uh, I, I'm just worried about how we all here who care about that What's our plan to deal with that? Because we should, we should decry it, we should denounce it, and I've just put out a press release condemning it. But then what's the steps that we can all take to change that course of action? I'm really interested in that part of the, of the debate, and thank you.